How's it going everybody? It's JDM Drifter, and for this week's video, I'm going to be reviewing the RLC 64 Impala Rosen 1 Lowrider. So this has been a very popular Redline Club car that people have been waiting for for a long time. This was originally revealed in 2019 during a Hot Wheel convention. Brendan Vitusky was showing some prototypes at the convention, and one of them was a 64 Impala Lowrider. The car was originally planned to be out for the 2020 Redline Club. They had some delays and things go wrong with their site. So this car ended up being the third Redline Club release of 2021. So Hot Wheels finally has released this car. I got mine pretty early. I haven't seen many other people get this at the time I'm recording the video. This is probably going to be one of the most popular Redline Club cars of all time. This is the first color they have done so far of this. It is inspired by a lot of the Hot Wheels 100% lowriders from the 90s, which I have one in my collection I brought out to show for this video. And I will be comparing that later to see how Hot Wheels has changed the suspension mechanism over 20 years later. Also for later in the video, I did bring out the regular mainline version of the 64 Impala that Hot Wheels does. And I also brought out some custom low riders that I have made and compare the suspension I've made to what Hot Wheels has came up with. Let's first go ahead and look at the box before I open it up. Usually when I do these reviews, I cut the tape and open these up first, but I didn't do that this time. So let's go ahead and take a look at the outer box that this comes in. So the typical outside box that these come in are just usually plain white, and that's what it is here. But it does have some pink writing. It says 64 Impala and Chevrolet in pink. Also has the Hot Wheels logo here on the top and Hot Wheels logo on this side, and Chevrolet on this side. And my box did come with a tiny dent here, and there's also a slight scratch here. They did not pack these very well. They only had one air packet in the box, and for the price of these, these cars should be packed a lot nicer. This car was around $38 with shipping, and I was only able to get one this time. They did make 20,000 of these. I'm not sure yet what number I have. We'll see that on the box that's inside here. But now that Hot Wheels has the unlimited memberships, people can just buy a membership now for $10, and you can also buy multiples. So there's a lot more memberships than cars. It used to be there was a limited number of memberships, and you were almost guaranteed to get everything, but now it is not very guaranteed, even even with high numbers on these cars. So now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the tape on the outer box so we can check out the car inside. Here we go, I got the one end of the box open. So let's go ahead and slide out the box inside. Let's hope everything's in good condition. So here is the box that the car is in. This is a felt box. There is no acrylic case for these, so you can actually take them out and adjust the suspension. Don't have to unscrew anything or open it from a card. So as you can see, the roses all around the box here. This car is called the Rose N1. There's the Hot Wheels logo up top. The whole box is pink. We have some lighter pink, some purple. Got the roses all around. It says Real Riders in all metal, 64 Impala. Have the regular Hot Wheels logo here. And it says Hot Wheels Collector Special Edition on this side. Here on the back, it gives all the information about the car. And the information here about the car looks like it's in a chain license plate, which people put on their lowriders. And let's go ahead and see what number I got. So I got number 4,200 out of 20,000 produced. I got exactly 4,200. It's kind of rare to get numbers exact like that. I did get a pretty low number out of how many of these were made. But let's go ahead and slide it out. And we also in here have another box that has Hot Wheels on it. It has the logo here. Basically the same as the other box as Collector Special Edition. Besides, it does not have the roses around it. And here it is, the 1964 Chevy Impala Lowrider. Wow, I haven't even taken the plastic off yet. And this is a beautiful looking car. Also in here is a mirror. So you can set the car on the mirror and see the underneath. But let's go ahead and remove the mirror first so we can get the plastic off so we can see the car. So here's the tiny mirror. This is just like a thin piece of plastic. So you can see it's like textured as well. Just a cheap piece of flexible thin plastic that has a little cover on it so it don't get scratched. You'll have to check that out in a minute. And let's go ahead and remove the plastic that is around the car. And there we go. There is the 64 Impala in the felt case. Wow, guys. 
This is absolutely beautiful. This has got to be one of my favorite Hot Wheels. And I say that about a lot of the cool new Hot Wheels that come out. But this is just so cleanly done and put together very nicely. I am very impressed with how this is. So I definitely will be putting this on the turntable at the end of the video so you guys can get a great look all around the car. So here it is, guys. The 1964 Chevy Impala Rose in One Lowrider. I'm gonna give you guys an up-close look at it and go through a lot of the details that this car has. But first, let's go ahead and check out the mirror that this comes with. So I told you guys these are coming a little bent. You can see it's just a cheap piece of plastic. It's just got chrome on the one side and has the roses all around it. So let's go ahead and peel off the plastic. So there it is with the mirror. So you guys can see that's definitely a nice touch to add to the car to have the roses all around it. And especially when you raise the suspension. So that's another thing we're going to have to test with the car. Hot Wheels started doing low riders in the 90s. This is one of my 100% low riders here, the Buick Riviera. They did multiple different types of low riders. Some they did different colors in. They had the low rider wheels, the paint. They didn't do any of them in Spectre Flame though. A lot of them were just regular paint or metallic. And they actually had a working adjustable suspension. And it was way better than the Ravel low riders, which were also out around the early 2000s and 90s. But they had never done a 64 Impala. They had done Buick Riviera, Chevy Bel Airs, but never a 64 Impala, which has always been one of the best low riders of all time. To me, the 64 Impala is the all-time best low rider. It's just the most iconic low rider. There's been so many different low riders built using a 64 Impala. These cars are also popular all over the world, in the United States, even in Japan. Low riders are also definitely one of my favorite styles of custom cars with the hydraulics, the candy paint, all the pen striping and detail. Low riders are definitely beautiful looking cars. So I'm guessing this is basically a totally new casting. This isn't the same tool as the regular Hot Wheels mainline 64 Impala, but it is very similar. The main difference is the base. This car is all metal and it has Spectra Flame magenta paint. This is definitely beautiful paint. The only thing about this is the roof and trunk seem to be pretty plain. It would have been cool to me, I think, if they would have done a silver roof and then added also some more pen striping and roses like they did on the hood to the trunk. That would have made this car look a lot nicer, especially for $38. But still, they did put a lot of decals on this, even on the rear roof pillar here. I only have one other Hot Wheel in Spectra Flame Magenta. It's from the original 16 reproduction set. Definitely very nice paint. This is sprayed over chrome, and then it has a chromed metal base. So as you can see, here is the working suspension mechanism. Now the base is metal, and as you can see, these are not separate pieces here. The front and back bumper, they actually do tuck under the wheels. And as you can see, there are two triangle screws holding this piece of the frame here in the middle of the base. That appears to be metal, but the front and back axle, which are also chrome, which allow the suspension to move, they both appear to be plastic, just chromed. They look very similar to the rest of the base, but you can tell that these are plastic. And on the bottom, it says 1964 Chevrolet Impala SS. And this was copyrighted in 2019. That's when they originally showed the prototype as well. Now, if you don't know, Hot Wheels inspired this by one of the most iconic low riders of all time. It was the Gypsy Rose 1964 Chevy Impala. I'll put a picture up on the screen of what it looks like. And there's never been an actual licensed replica in any scale of that car. People have had to make their own custom Hot Wheels of it using the regular 64 Impala. And people have also done model kits that are replicas of it as well. But there's never been a licensed replica of it or something actually made. So Hot Wheels inspired this by the Gypsy Rose Impala, but they called it the Rose in One. The real Gypsy Rose Impala is in a light metallic pink and it has a silver roof with roses all over it as well. Hot Wheels did this in more of the magenta, which looks more purple. They did not do the silver roof and they did not put the roses on it in the same way. Also, the real Gypsy Rose Impala has chrome five-spoke rims, not the golden chrome wire wheels that this car has. 
This has a new type of wheel from what I can tell. It is different than the original Hot Wheels 100% rims. This is a chromed rim with a gold chrome painted center. The spinner on the end is silver as well. And this has a rubber white wall tire. This also has silver window trim as well as silver door handles. It has headlight detail with a silver grill and chrome bumper. S low on the license plate for slow and it's low. It has the same plate in the back, their California license plate. It also has the silver trim in the back of the car as well as the taillight detail. Detail. This has regular light tenant windows. So you can see there's five speakers in the back. They're black with silver around them. And this has a purplish colored interior with a black steering wheel. So let's go ahead and test that out. So this is about as high as the front can go. And these do stay in place pretty firm from what it seems. And it seems pretty hard to get to the back as well with how the axle is kind of deep in with the fender wells and here is the back now popped up now for anyone who did get this i would definitely be careful with it this does have plastic axles with like a little ball joint on the end and they are kind of hard to adjust especially in the back so i would definitely be careful with this and wouldn't overuse it it could get loose over time or it could also snap in half that's one thing i'd be worried about with this so here's what it looks like all lifted up so you can see how it is connected here on the base. I don't really trust to do this into a three wheel because I feel like this car could break. So I'm not gonna do the three wheel with this, but you guys get the idea. The car does raise up and it does stay in place. And it also could not hold a hopping position. The back does not go up far enough. Definitely does look super cool all raised up like this and pretty realistic. So here it is with the front all the way lowered and the back all the way up. And I didn't realize that I actually did not have the front popped in all the way. So the car can actually go lower than what it already was. Now it does get a little bit looser, like I said, after you use it a bit. So here's the front all the way popped up and the back all the way down. And you can push it down. Now the suspension, as you can see, is still kind of stiff. You can still actually push down on the car and it can go down a little more. And this car does not seem to be totally straight. Seems like it's kind of popped up a little more on one side the suspension mechanism still does need some work it works good enough but it does need some improving still because the car is still not totally flat on the ground and that is because of the back here one wheel goes in more than the other and here's what it looks like fully raised up on the mirror that is about all with the impala so now i'm going to show the regular mainline version compared to this so as you can see here in the front, the grill and the bumper are definitely different. The molds are definitely two separate molds. Otherwise, the car seems to be about the same proportions and everything. Here's a side view. The interior even does seem to be pretty similar as well. Just doesn't have the speakers or anything like that. Definitely this car is a lot lower than this one. And here's what the base looks like. Definitely the base is similar as well, but as you can see on the new Lowrider, it has the fully cut out axles and a lot more detail. So that's about it for the RLC compared to the mainline. Hot Wheels has been making the mainline 64 Impala since 2004, and it was originally designed by Dave Wise, and the new RLC Lowrider Impala was designed by Brennan Vitusky. And there has been a premium all metal version of the 64 Impala. There were two colors of it and Hot Wheels Classics back in 2008. I don't have either of them, but the only difference in that is it had a metal base, but it did have Spectre Flame paint as well, but it was not chromed underneath. It was just a polished up metal. Here's also a custom I had made back in 2018 of this regular mainline Impala. This was out in 2018 during their 50th anniversary. And this was one of the first cars I did a suspension method on. I painted the roof black, detailed the front, detailed the back, just put some steelies on it. This was just for my original suspension method. So I had the base all cut up and I just had super glue holding the axles in place. As you can see, I can raise it up, drop it down, and then I can have it slammed, it still rolls. I can just raise the front or the back or whatever I'd like for display. So this was my original method. This is, like I said, one of the first cars I'd ever turned into a lowrider. In a way, this kind of does work better than the Hot Wheel one because you can adjust things more easily. It'll still stay in place and you can even do a three wheel. But I ended up coming up with a new method for my suspension. And this is one of the 90s Ravel lowriders I was talking about. This is a 1959 Impala. So you can see the trunk opened and you have pumps and batteries back there. Had pinstriping on the windows, pinstriping all around the car with just a candy paint. 
This also had the lowrider wheels, which are called Dayton's, and this one did not have a spinner on the rim, but it still had rubber tires as well. And this was the new suspension mechanism I had came up with. And as you can see, it can do a three wheel a lot easier. And the car has a custom made styrene base. The reason why I ended up doing this to my only Ravel lowrider is because the base was originally dry rotted plastic and it was just crumbling up. So I decided to fix it and redo it like this. And here is a Matchbox 1975 Chevy Caprice. I put some Matchbox row riders on this as well and fully detailed it. I have made a new type of suspension for this. Now the suspensions don't look the cleanest, but they do work. I was able to keep the base and just shave out the center. And now I can also adjust this to any way I like. So there are all the different types of low riders I've customized. And here is what this was inspired by the most. This is the 1990s Hot Wheels 100% 1969 Buick Riviera. As you can see here on the base, it says it was copyrighted in 1998. It says Slammer as well in 69 Riviera. You can see on the base of this, it is painted in a matte black. It is metal as well with plastic axles. You can see how it is pretty similar to the new Hot Wheel design. Besides, the Hot Wheel has no detail. 100% Riviera has detail. These were pretty expensive back at the time they were new. Not many people did really get these. Today, these are very desirable and popular. I got this one a few years ago. It was brand new in the box. And these did come in acrylic cases, so you had to unscrew them. And as you can see, you can also adjust the suspension on here and it does adjust way better than how the new Hot Wheels 64 Impala does. It does go up higher and is more easier to use and then you can drop it down a lot easier than the new one. Also the back does raise up as well and here it is compared to the Hot Wheels so the Impala does go up more in the back than the original 100% Riviera did. This also has the Dayton lowrider wheel with a spinner in the center with rubber tires. As you can see it is a totally different wheel than what they are using now and this just had a metallic candy style paint. This is in a orangish brown color with some orange decals all around it and it says raw riviera it also has a plaque in the back window i wish the hot wheels would have done that actually instead of the speakers and it says the original it's detailed in the front and back with chrome bumpers and this is definitely a great piece to have to go with the new 64 impala okay so now i'm going to go ahead and put this on the turntable and that's going to be all for this video So I think that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, please comment, like, and subscribe. This was definitely a super nice looking car. There is a few things they still need to improve on this. It would have been a lot better if they'd done metal axles that were chromed, and then they actually had them where you could adjust it into the three-wheel position, and it wouldn't wear out or possibly break. I know some people are going to try to mess with this too much, and the axles will snap in half. Also, some of the plastic around the axles weren't cleaned up super properly, as well as the decals look like water slides. But overall, for really their first Hot Wheel Lowrider in over 20 years, I think that this came out pretty good. Definitely a very rare and desirable piece, no matter what. So if you enjoyed this video, again, please comment, like, and subscribe, and look forward for future videos, and I will see you next time. <music>